Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about compactness. And specifically, I'm going to talk about compactness on the real line, even though compactness is a more general object, just to help you guys build your in intuition. So just know that this doesn't necessarily translate to general spaces. Um, and certainly this characterization of being closed and bounded is, is definitely does not translate. Um, but on the real line, it is true that X is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded. So we might as well go ahead and define it like this. Really, the, the motivating definition of it is not that it's closed and bounded. And that's why I say on more general objects, this doesn't hold. Um, but on the real line, this is equivalent, so we might as well define it this way. So I'm going to go through a motivating example where let's say that P of T is the price uh, as to what closed means. So this is the price of an instant pot. And I'm going to call, so this is the, sorry, the list price. of an instant pot. And we're going to view this as a continuous process. Even though prices aren't really updated on a continuous scale, um, we're going to go ahead and just um, treat this like a continuous process where you interpolate between like stocks, stocks update every 15 seconds. So you, but you can interpolate between those 15 seconds. So we're going to treat it like it's a continuous process. And what we would like to see is the price um, does the price of the past values oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Tn goes to T. Uh, so this this is continuity, and we're gonna say that it, it uh, approaches t from below. So I'm looking at the immediate past. So it is continuous. So that's what we're gonna say that this is true. Okay. So what closed means is that p of t is a valid price. And so well, you, you, you might say, well, okay, we've assumed it's continuous. This limit exists. But um, this is somewhat obvious, right? So let's say I bought my Instapod for $50 a long time ago. They're more like $100 now. But I needed something that's about $50 um, for this example to work out. So we're going to say Instant Pot was around the time I bought it, which was around $50. So if we have a sequence, say it's 49, 50, and 49, 75, 49, 60, 49, 59, 49, 90, and so on. And we're going to assume it converges to $50. 49.98. Well, for it to converge, I can't have it be positive. So here, I actually have to have the sequence be eventually constant for it to converge. So for Tn very close to T, it's still it's $50. It's so the graph of, of the price is gonna look like um so here's T, here's uh, T1, T2, here's 50. 
basically, oh yeah, so we're viewing this as a continuous process, so I can go ahead and draw a curve. Um, right, you might have a constant price for a while. Might even go above 50. But the point is, since I only have a discrete set of prices, eventually it's going to be constant as I take the sequence Tn here. And so I'm going to say, let's say P, P of T is $50. And this is clearly a valid price. And so what closed really means, it means that the limit point and here we're we're now thinking about the real line. So if I take the limit as xn goes to, or as n goes to infinity of xn, and I know that it converges to some value x that this value x is actually a real number. You don't end up with something like a complex number or something. Uh, well, okay, yeah, sorry. We've already declared x to be a subset of r that is compact. So what it says is, if I take the limit here, it's actually in the set x. So in this case, P of T is a valid price. And so we're good, right? This was where, you know, this is the set of all uh, Q, uh, let's call it lowercase p, such that P is a valid price. But, I'll show you an example that is not closed. Now consider the sequence. We'll call this P Austin. Of T. Which is 1.0825 times P of T. So this right here is because we have an 8.25% sales tax in Austin, which is where I currently live, Austin, Texas. So that's our sales tax. Okay, so I'll, let's uh, we'll just go ahead and put TN here because I've already declared a specific T. So that tells me that P Austin of t, which is 1.0825 times the limit as n goes to infinity of p of tn, is um, 54. I'll put quotes here with a dollar sign, 54.125. And so this is not a valid price. And you can say, well, you round it up and all these things. But yes, that, but that's the thing. You have to round it up. This, the, the numbers don't work out. So, so this is, will be not closed under sales tax. And then I'll show you another example. So, so we've, we've basically left the space that we've wanted to be in. Um, despite the fact that we can compute this number 54.125, it doesn't actually exist in the space that we want it to be. That's not a valid price. You have to do something extra to that value, namely to round it up or round it down. In this case, you, you round it up because there's the five on the end there, but 
But, so we can see that for any given place in the United States, the sales tax might basically mess things up and we're no longer in the set that we want to be in. But you can also end up with random coincidences. So I'm going to call P Rhode Island of TN to be 1.07 P of T, uh, TN. In this case, um, P Rhode Island of T is the limit. This is 1.07 times 50. And this 7% of 50 is 350. So this is 5350, which is actually a valid price. You don't have to do anything to it. So the point is, depending on the price, um, depending on the price, you actually don't know whether or not you're going to end up with a valid price at the end of the day. You have to do the um, calculation, and you have to see if there are these extra digits that pop out. And then if there's an extra digit, you have to round up to get the exact price or round down. But that's, that's kind of annoying. That's not as easy to think about as like, oh, well, if I tick the limit, I'm just going to end up with a valid price, which isn't necessarily the case. So closed objects are nice in the sense that you don't have to worry about this this sort of effect happening that kicks you outside of this, out of this, out of the space. But the point is it's inconclusive because you could end up getting this just by, if I give you the right numbers with the right sales tax, because that's the sales tax in Rhode Island, um, then you could end up with not having to do this, but that's random. And, and that's not what you'd want. You want structure on what you're doing. Um, and then bounded, I think is easier. Um, so bounded, uh, I think I underlined this in white, so we'll go. Bounded um, is a lot easier. I don't even think we really need an analogy here to see why you'd want, why you care about this. So bounded just means um, for every x in our compact set x. Um, sorry. There is a number, let's call it uh, M, in our set, uh, oh no, in R, in the bigger set R, such that for all X in X, the absolute value of X is less than or equal to that value M. So all that's saying is that um, if we're on the real line, so for example, x equals r, or let's call it a, because I've already declared x. If a is equal to r, this is not bounded because I can take the sequence xn equals n, and that goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. What it basically means is you just have a ton of points here, and I can throw an interval of this form, and all of them remain all these remain inside the, the blue interval here. And, and that's all there really is to, to boundedness. Um, the motivation as to why you care about this is because um, you really want sequences that converge. So you don't want things that can just go to infinity because um, that presents problems to you. And then in the next video, I'll show you guys, um, we'll actually get into the, the definitions as to what, what those uh, things mean. We've already defined bounded here, but I'll, I'll go ahead and define what closed means in a more rigorous sense. 
and then show you guys some examples of some compact and non-compact sets in the next video.